Hi guys and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be going through some potential transfer targets for Sunderland for the upcoming season. So recently, over the last few days, I did put out on Twitter, I asked you guys who you think we should sign, why we should sign them and, and what have you. So basically, if none of you like the players we're about to show you, then the blame isn't on me. <laughs> but yeah, thank you to everyone who did respond to the tweet. There was literally probably 50 to 60 players to choose from, but I've narrowed it down to 20 ish players. Yeah, I think it's around 20 players. I've actually stuck them on FIFA for no particular reason. I just wanted to make it look a bit nicer rather than me just doing a lot of screenshots of players all over the screen. So yeah, so there's about 20 players to go through. I'll just quickly whiz through them and then, uh, then we'll finish the episode and then you guys can leave in the comments who you think we should sign, if it's realistic that we should sign them and what have you. And, uh, and that will be the episode. So this is Sunderland's transfer targets chosen by you. So first and foremost, we have centre-back Ben Hennigan, who does play for Sheffield United, although for the last season he was out on loan at Blackpool. So whether this will be a permanent transfer or another loan, I'm not too sure. But he is a relatively decent centre-back. He's a big lad, six foot five, very strong. Uh, but whether he will come to us is, uh, is another question. But it's a player that I'm definitely, uh, I'd definitely be happy to see come to Sunderland. And uh, I think one of the main things we do need a big, towering, physical centre back. So this certainly fits the bill with Ben Hennigan. So for me, I think that'd be a decent shout to go for him. Again, ignore the attributes and, uh, and the stats and stuff, uh, the ratings in FIFA. This is literally just to make the video look a little bit prettier. But because uh, <laughs> 63 rated does not make. For nice reading. Next up, another centre back, another big towering centre back at six foot four. We have Semi Ajayi from Rotherham, who of course were sadly relegated from the Championship last year, which would probably make it a little bit more realistic that we could potentially get him because he is a player I'm a big fan of. He managed to get himself seven goals in the Championship last year as a, and coming from a centre back, although he can play as a CDM as well. But he is a decent player, and I think more than likely another Championship team if he is to be sold will be interested in but Ajay is definitely a player I think fits the bill again at six foot four, strong lad, he can play with his feet. So yeah, for me that's a, I think that'd be a great signing if we were to get him. Next up, another centre back, we have Cedric Kipre. I'm not too sure how that if that is how you pronounce his name. Apologies if I've just butchered it. But it's another centre back. He plays for Wigan, so whether he would want to drop down a league remains to be seen and I highly, highly doubt that he would that he would want to do that. But he is standing at six foot four. He is a beast on the young as well, so if there was a chance to get him, I'd definitely, definitely go for him. But it's another player that I think is probably a little bit unlikely. But you know, if we want to, you know, shoot for the stars and really walk League One, which you know is not an easy task, as we know, uh, we have to probably uh, raise our standards a little bit and go for players like this. So uh, if he was to come I'd, again, I'd be very happy with that. Now moving on to the right backs, we do have Moses Odebajo. He's a quick, pacey player who can play as either a right-back or a left-back. He has recently been released from Brentford, but it is rumoured that he has been linked with Chef Wednesday. But if a player who you know, I, I'm definitely a fan of, a better pace down the right-hand side, and it would allow Luke O'Neill to push up the field if we were to get him. But like I say, he will be attracting interest from Championship side. So whether he, again, would want to drop, da drop down a division remains to be seen, but... Odebajo, definitely a player I'd be a fan of and definitely be happy if we did sign him. Now, another right back on the list, we do have Jason McCarthy of Wickham Wanderers. Again, another relatively young lad, but a different kind of uh, defender this time. Of course, adebajo has got a bit more pace and what have you. But for me, for this league, I would prefer to see a more sort of no-nonsense right back, a bit more physicality. And to be fair, when we did play up against uh, McCarthy, uh, against Wickham this year, he had our left midfielders in his back pocket and he was fantastic particularly against uh, McGeady when we did play him uh, and I think he's a very solid right back a similar uh, the similar kind of right back I would like to see were probably when we had the likes of Phil Bardsley you know nothing too special but he did the the groundwork you know he kept it simple and uh, hard hitting in a challenge and just no nonsense so I think McCarthy for me would probably be my favoured right back option if we were to go for any of these right backs that um, you guys have suggested so I think that's a really good suggestion and McCarthy again it's another player I'd, I'd really like to see at the club now to another right back that was mentioned that was Chris Gunter who is full of experience which, which would be nice but whether he again would want to drop down another division uh, that, that would remain to be seen I highly doubt it he can play right or left back he's got a ton of caps for Wales he's been at Reading since 2012 
So yeah, a, a very experienced full back, a good suggestion, but again, a highly unlikely one, I, I would think. But would I be happy with him coming to Sunderland? I think I would be, yeah, I think I'd be pretty happy. Now moving on to central midfielders, because no left-backs were suggested, which I suppose is fine, because we do have quite an abundance of left-backs. We'd like to reach James and uh, Denver Hume as well. So, and you know, obviously we have Oviedo, but I doubt that he will end up staying at the club. So moving on to central midfielders, we have Tom Bayless, a player who I've been a massive, massive fan of since we played uh, Coventry earlier in this season. It stands at 6 foot. He's more of a technical midfielder as well, although he is very strong for such a young lad. I think he's about 21 years of age right now, uh, although it says differently here. I think he's 21 now. Uh, he already has an abundance of uh, game time under his belt. Uh, really confident lad. He can start off attacks, he can get involved. Uh, get amongst goals potentially and definitely a type of central midfielder that we don't have at the club right now so if the option was there a million percent I would go for Tom Bayless I'm a massive fan of his and it's probably one of the more realistic options as well although he may be attracting interest from higher leagues but I think Bayless would be absolutely fantastic as a Sunderland player but now moving on to a more central attacking midfielder and that is Elias Chair. I probably butchered his name I do apologise but he does play for QPR. He spent the first half of last season, uh, got about eight or nine appearances for QPR before getting loaned out to Stevenage, where he did have a very successful time there. So if QPR were willing to offload him, then, you know, yeah, why not try him? But I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know too much about him because I don't. He can play on the left wing as well, uh, but he is more of a sort of number 10 type role. So a young lad as well uh, from Morocco, uh, yeah, I, I don't see why not, but I don't really know too much about him. So uh, so if you guys do, let me know in the comments and what do you think about that potential signing. Next up, another attacking midfielder, we have Jack Payne, who is currently playing for Huddersfield, although he has been out on loan for the last few seasons. And most recently, he was on loan at Bradford, where he did have a relatively successful spell. He got himself eight goals in uh, under 30 appearances, which isn't bad whatsoever. So... You know, he does have a bit about him, he does have a bit of flair, I have seen him before and I think he is a pretty decent player, although I wouldn't be too crushed if he wasn't to come back. I can see why people uh, or, or why fans would like to see him at the stage like next season, so whether Huddersfield would want to let him go or another loan spell, uh, we'd, we'd have to see, but yeah, not a bad player whatsoever. Next up on the list uh, is a player that was actually in my previous list last season, but he ended up signing for Bolton Wanderers and that is Oz Tuma is a really, really good sort of attacking midfielder that you could put in, bet in between the hole, between the striker and the sort of central midfielders. Uh, I think he's, just, he's got that spark about him, he's got a lot of creativity, he's got an eye for goal and of course with Bolton getting relegated last season and the position that they're in now that they do have a points uh, deduction and what have you, which is obviously horrible for them, maybe that would make us a bit more appealing to, uh, to Oz Tuma. Um, so yeah, he's definitely a player I would definitely, definitely be interested in it interested in although he didn't get a massive amount of game time last year so whether that is due to injury or or, or there's an attitude problem there I'm, I'm not too sure i might be thinking too much into it because uh, i haven't really been following his progress as of uh, over the last season but he's definitely definitely a player who has quality he definitely has ability and it's a and it will add us a bit of uh, creativity in that final third which I think we desperately desperately in need of. Next up another player who I'm, I don't even know whether I'm going to dare to pronounce his name although I am completely and massively aware of him and that is Enobakare. Probably pronounced that horribly wrong as I say but this lad if we are going to get ourselves a sort of central attacking midfielder probably will have to be a loan deal as he, uh, he is contracted to Wolves. Uh, he was on loan at Coventry last season and he absolutely rips us a new one at the stage of my life. He's got so much pace to burn, technical ability, can score goals. Only a young lad as well. So if it's a loan deal, then I'd be more than happy with that because he really did. Um, he really did cause us problems when we did play him. Like I say, he's only a young lad. He can play down the centre or on the right wing. He's, he's got plenty and plenty of pace, and he's just such a dangerous player. Again, it's something that we don't really have uh, within our squad right now in terms of direct pacey players. I mean, people seem to think that what more is that player, but he just can't control the ball, can he? <laughs> That's a bit harsh, isn't it? That is a bit harsh. But yeah, he's definitely a player that was suggested many, many times uh, on that tweet that I did put out. So uh, it looks like a lot of fans would like to see him at the stage of the light, so I'm massively behind it as well. Next up on the list, another central-minded midfielder is Jackson Irvine. The Australian currently plays for Hull City. He's got plenty of experience. Uh, it's a player that... 
might be on the uh, sort of periphery of being unrealistic, but you know, you guys have suggested him, but if I, I think he would be a perfect midfielder for us to have within the club. Um, it, it, he's got a bit of aggression about him, he's very solid, he can pass the ball. I think he's quite a well-rounded midfielder that I'd like to see in that midfield, because at the minute I think we do have plenty of midfielders that are relatively similar, so I think to have someone like him, I think that would be ideal, but again, relatively unrealistic. <laughs> now next up on the list is a player that has been suggested probably the most, and I think almost every suggestion uh, for a transfer target included this player, and this is also a player that was in my transfer targets for last season as well, and that is of course Marcus Madison of Peterborough. Now, Madison is a self-confessed Sunderland fan, which would obviously bode well with us, although I have been sent screenshots of conversations between Sunderland fans and Madison asking if he would be interested in the club and what have you, and of course he has to remain professional, he can't say, yeah, yeah, I really want to come, of course he can't, but uh, I gauge that, you know, of course he does have an admiration for the club, but I, I think he's either happy where he is, or if he is going to go somewhere, I think he will probably go to a high division, which is... Well deserved to be fair because he's a very very good player. He's got an eye for goal. Uh, he's such a creative player, and his assists are just absolutely off the charts. Um, but again, I, I think if we were to go for an attacking player, he would be our top top transfer target because uh, I think he could make all the difference in the final third. Because I think if we have like a Will Grigg up top, and we have actually a player that can find him can find uh, Mr. Will Grigg, then that would that would be a lethal combination and uh, I think he would be that person. Marcus Madison is still only relatively young, uh, well sort of just past, I think he's about 26 now I would think, uh, but he can play on the right, on the left, he can play down the middle as the sort of number 10, so it, it, he's, really, um, he's really flexible in where he can play as well, which is, which is really nice, but yeah, for me, Marcus Madison absolutely 100% I would love to see at the club. And now to another player that was mentioned several times, including myself, but Jamal Lowe. And of course this one is probably the most unrealistic on the uh, uh, out of the, the players we've got on the list. Uh, Jamal Lowe had an absolutely excellent breakthrough season last year with plenty of goals, assists, his trickery. He had an absolutely excellent season. For me, he would probably be a little bit out of our price range and will more than likely be going to a higher end championship club. He could probably do a job in the Premier League for a lower club as well, uh, maybe in the sort of bottom half, um, you know, depending on how he plays and what have you. But, f I mean, if we did manage to get low, then uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be shitting myself with excitement and uh, it would obviously piss off Pompey fans as well, which would be equally as sweet. But this, for me, is probably the most unrealistic one, if we could do it. For me, I think it'll probably be worth eight, nine, ten million, and I, and I don't think we'd be prepared to pay that um, for, for the one player in League One. But, you know, if we could somehow get him on the cheap and he is interested, then Jamal, you know where to come, lad. You know where to come. We'd love to have you. <laughs> now, next up on the list, we do have winger Bruno Andrade, who does play for League Two Champions Lincoln, and he had a fantastic, fantastic season, scoring goals, assists, the lot. He's a skillful player, a bit of pace about him. It's another intelligent winger, and for me, I think he would be an excellent, excellent signing, and also probably a more realistic one as well. You know, he's just come up uh, from League Two. Would you like to, you know, sort of jump the gun a bit and go for a team that are going for promotion again? Although not saying Lincoln can't do that, of course, but I, I think we would probably be an appealing option to him if we were to go for him. So Andrade, a very good suggestion from you guys, and a player who, again, I'd really like to see as a uh, He's go for now. Another winger is Jordi Huwula, who uh, plays for Coventry at the minute. And there was a lot of Coventry wingers or attacking players that were thrown about in uh, in these transfer targets and these suggestions for you guys because these just seem to run right, don't they? <laughs> don't they, Coventry, in terms of pace and what have you? And Huwula definitely fits the bill in that sense. Uh, he can play on the left, uh, on the right. He plays a striker. And it's just his pace to burn. His, his unpredictability. He can grab goals as well. So, again, something we don't have, and I'd be more than happy to see him come to Sunderland. Now, on to the strikers, where we have four very, very decent options here. Some of them may be a little bit unrealistic in comparison to others, but we definitely need a striker. We currently only have Charlie Wyke and, um, uh, and Will Grigg on the books. Now, for me, I think we only really need three strikers at the club for an absolute push, but I think if we are going to go for... Uh, a couple of these strikers, I think that either Charlie White or Will Grigg would have to make way. And in my opinion, that would probably have to be White. I would prefer to see White leave than 
than, than Grigg. But here is the first suggestion from the strikers, and that is Nangele from Blackpool. It is rumoured that he has uh, just signed a contract with Blackpool as well, so I'm not too sure whether this one is actually possible, but it has been put out there from you guys, and it's definitely a player I'd be interested in. Big, big lad, six foot four, but he he was such a handful both times we played uh, Blackpool. He's got good ball control. He's such a strong lad, and he can. He's got an absolute rocket of a shot as well. Um, doesn't always hit the back of the net, but he does have a rocket of a shot. And uh, I think he's just a player who, who's very different to what we've already got. And uh, I think in a better side, with no disrespect to Blackpool, I, I think he will bag goals upon goals. So uh, Nangelé definitely play. I'd be very, very interested in, and probably one of the more realistic options to go for out of the strikers that have been suggested. And next up, of course, is. Tom Eaves, who is currently a free agent, believe it or not, who scored absolutely bagfuls of goals for Gillingham last season. And and if he is a free agent and he hasn't signed a contract already with someone, sign that man up because six foot six is and he's so good with his feet as well. I mean that goal he scored against Portsmouth, I don't know whether you've seen it, was absolutely outstanding. Um, and I do think it, it, he would be such a handful again, similar to Nangelé, you know, big lad, he's strong. But he, he, he is good with his feet as well, which I do like to see. He's a confident lad and uh, he's experienced. And I, I think he would get quite a few goals for us. So for me, I think top trumps for target in terms of strikers. I, I think we should be getting in his ear right now. But because if he's a free agent, you've got yourself a, a goal scorer there. Al although in saying that, Will Grigg has scored a shit ton of goals in League One. Charlie White has scored a shit ton of goals in League One. And neither of them exactly set the world alight next year. So, you know, just because he had a good season this season doesn't necessarily mean he's going to guarantee you a load of goals. But for me, free agent, get hold of him. Next up on the strikers list is Freddy Lapardo, a player who's got 18 goals in League One last season. He's got pace about him, a bit of strength, a bit of skill, and he can score goals, as we already know. And he does play for Plymouth, who have just been relegated. So it is a realistic sort of uh, target to go for. It's something that might interest him. And I think getting the likes of Eve, Eve sorry, and uh, Lopardo, uh, and maybe dropping Charlie White or selling him, I, I think we'd have three cracking, cracking strikers going into League One if, if that was the case. Or even if we did keep White, that's four, probably the, four of the, some of the best strikers uh, going I, I, in League One. So for me, Lopardo is definitely, definitely a very good option. And the player that was mentioned several times um, from you guys. Now the final player on this list and the final striker on the list is John Marquis, a player who scored 20 goals for Doncaster last year. Now for me, I can't see Doncaster letting him go or if he, they were to let him go, it would be for a really hefty price or they'd really push the price up as much as humanly possible because I highly doubt that Doncaster would want to sell their top striker, their top man to uh, League One rival, uh, I'd highly doubt that would happen, although of course I do have a massive amount of respect for the guy, he's a cracking player, uh, he scores goals for fun, or at least he did last year, he scored 13 goals the year before, I believe, so you know you're going to get goals with him, if it's if the option is there, then of course go for him, you know what you're going to get with him, um, but I highly, highly doubt that Doncaster would let him go. But that is the list guys, thank you very much for getting involved on Twitter and giving me these tracks for targets, so out of the ones that you've seen today, which ones do you think we should go for, which ones do you not think we could go for and what have you, let me know in the comments. But if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for me. It would be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jamming.